I'm Charlie Bright with Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Moses Boyo, the director of the uh, new documentary Bobby Wine, the People's President, as part of Gold Derby's Meet the Experts film documentaries panel. Um, first question I, I want to ask, and uh, were you familiar with Bobby Wine's music prior to working on this film? Thank you so much for having me, Charlie. Um, and, you know, I feel quite uh, blessed and honored to be here with, with these uh, incredible films um, that you put together. Yes. Um, so when we started working on, on uh, when I, so the film is co-directed by Christopher Sharp as well. Um, and also, he also produced the film. Um, I um, had listened to Bobby's music growing up. And as an artist, he has always been a very consistent musician. Um, so every five years in Uganda, the dictatorship um, uh, comes, uh, they come together with like a group of musicians and they take like the big ones and they do a big theme song for his campaign. Um, and um, Bobby has never joined this group of artists for years. And he's always, you know, uh, responded to the misrule in Uganda with a song. Um, so he's been a very consistent musician. And yes, I love his music. I've always listened to his music. And yeah, and I continue to, yeah. And uh, you, you were the by the uh, the group of artists that were that you're talking about. They were doing a song for Museveni and his and his camp and his uh, and his campaign and party, right? Yes. So Museveni, uh, with millions and millions of cash, you know, he pays off uh, uh, many many musicians to to maybe eleven in number, and they do like one big theme song to support his his dictatorship. Um, yeah, and I mean, yeah, Uganda is ruled by a dictatorship that has been in power now 37 years long. Um, yeah. Um, so it, uh, uh, something that I was, is, is Bobby still an elected member of parliament in Uganda? Uh, no, so he, um, when he ran for the presidency, he had to lose his seat uh, as an MP. Uh, but he is the leader of the largest uh opposition uh, political group in Uganda, um, which, I mean, they should be in power. They they won the election. Um, most of his members of parliament won their, their seats around the country, but there was heavy and, and you know, there was a rigging of, un, un, you know, unimaginable numbers uh, to the point that in some electoral um, areas, um, the number of votes that you know the the um, seven he received the dictator received were way more than the registered voters in those regions. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know they were just cooking up numbers. Yeah. Um, does uh, Bobby see ever see himself uh, uh, returning to uh, political office or trying to run again for political office? So, firstly, well, with this film, um, we we would like. Western audiences and really the keepers of democracy to hold Uganda to account. The people who um, fund Uganda, uh, US, the US government gives Uganda to the tune of 1 billion US dollars. The EU gives an equal amount uh, to Uganda. And we would like for this film to raise some awareness on the situation in Uganda. And with that, we hope that there will be um, ele election, um, uh, there will be uh, a fair election with observers from the West that will uh, put preconditions to this aid uh, that will push the government to have a free and fair election. That's the only thing that will have Bobby to run again. But, you know, he, he doesn't want the same thing to happen as before. You know, people kidnapped and, and disappeared. And um, yeah, it was a very violent election that he hopes uh, is not the same. Yeah. Well, that actually brings me to my next question. Um, you know, the um, the scenes uh, where uh, Bobby is campaigning and uh, uh, runs into interference from the military, um, not not even the police, but the actual military uh, being uh, used to uh, silence him and arrest him. Um, uh, how I have to wonder how much danger did you and uh, the crew find yourself in during the peak of that presidential campaign? Um, so I've been I was I've been following Bobby Wine uh, 
for this film since 2017. So it's been five years in the making. And through those five years, in fact, um, yes, at the beginning, the violence was happening to politicians and their supporters, but close to the election, this violence was meted upon journalists, filmmakers, and myself. Um, and I was arrested and locked up in prison for a couple of days and, you know, arrested a couple of other times, you know, just held in detention. And um, I I was also shot in the face close to the um, to the election. Just three, three days after nomination, um, I was shot in the face. So some of these things were really to stop me from what I was doing because I, I had been identified, uh, you know, this camera guy following Bobby. Bobby is like enemy number one of the dictatorship. So, um, yeah, but uh, it, it was an honor and blessing to 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 witness uh, this revolution and and to see the people rise up, you know, to dictatorship and fight for their rights, freedoms, and and you know, self determination. Yeah, uh, I think you may have touched on this uh, a little bit before, but um, do you feel it's like it's possible to be optimistic about Uganda's future, at least politically? <laughs> Yes. Um, I mean, with individuals like Bobby, really forward thinking and he's stepped up to the task and he's leading, you know, the largest opposition uh, group. I mean, he's leading the largest political party. It's from a grassroots movement to um, now a political party. Um, they um very courageous and brave and, and forward looking. And yes, we can we have hope if, you know, there can be free and fair elections. We have hope. Um, and, you know, you see individuals like Bobby continuously asking his supporters to remain nonviolent, you know, um, and he's democratic looking. He, he wants to return to democracy. Um, we, we hope that leaders like these can, will not be ignored, you know, by the world um, because the rise of totalitarianism is present today in the world in many places, as we all know. Um, yeah, uh, but yes, there's hope. There's hope. We have a lot of hope and, and uh, Ugandans are very resilient. Um, yeah, uh, history tells us that dictatorships never last and they never win. At the end of the day, the people of Uganda will be free and they will win. Yeah. So uh, just to touch on Museveni a bit, something I've always been curious about is how did, uh, did, how did Museveni come into power? Because he was just a couple of years after Idi Amin was deposed, correct? Yes, so Museveni came into power in 1986 um, after a, a five year long um, guerrilla war where, which saw over five, uh, half a million people die, died in that war. Um, and he took over power uh, from this guerrilla, um, you know, from, from this uh, guerrilla uprising promising that there would be, you know, he would uh, have a return to democracy, that there was going to be a new path for the country. And in fact, the first 10 years or so were very, uh, he was a very progressive leader. He was a darling of the West, you know, in the region. Um, he was implementing really great um, policies. In fact, um, uh, I mean, he he he, he has hosted uh, 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 the the former U.S. president, uh, Cl uh, uh, Clinton, and and you know, so th these were things that really showed that there was there was hope, and his government ha had hope. But um, after he came into power, um, he very quickly started turning from this individual he he once spoke against. He famously. While in the bush, famously said, um, the problem of Africa is that the, it's not the people, it's not uh, the, the the situation in the country. It's it's the leaders that want to stay in power too long. Now, Museveni has has done exactly the same thing. He has become a shadow of himself, um, and you know uh, the country started derailing in two thousand five when he removed the first. Um, he changed the constitution and removed um, age and age. Uh, sorry, when he removed the term limits, uh, 
we had a very good constitution that was actually written by a commission that he put in place himself, you know. Um, so uh, the term limits were lost in 2005. And since then, the country started derailing to this totalitarian military dictatorship that we have today. Um, and in 2017, he removed the age limit, um, which was the final you know, impediment to his uh, life rule. And now he's really a life president. Yeah. Well, Moses, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best and we look forward to seeing you on our panel in just a little bit. Thank you.